Hello and welcome to the second tutorial on Opossum. My name is Max, I'm a researcher at the Chair for Computing and Architecture at ICD, and I'm part of the Opossum developer team. In this tutorial, we want to look at Performance Explorer, which is part of Opossum starting with version 3. Performance Explorer is a novel tool that visualizes a single objective optimization problem's fitness landscape and allows the designer to interactively and intuitively design with it. In the description below, you can also find a link to a paper discussing Performance Explorer. Okay, first, let's look at how we can update our Opossum version to Opossum 3. I'm gonna open the package manager. And so if you have Opossum installed, you'll find Opossum under installed. Otherwise you can search for Opossum. And you can see now that there's this little arrow indicating that we can update the, in the installed version. And to do this, you simply press the install button and uh, confirm. After downloading and installing um, from the package manager, you'll have to restart Rhino. Just also tells you up here. Okay, those of you who have watched the first Opossum tutorial are already familiar with this tutorial file. Um, as a quick recap, we have a parametric shell design with six input variables defining the opening heights the center height, and two offsets that define the global shape. These variables are connected to a custom geometry generator, and we're using Caramba to calculate the maximum displacement occurring in the shell, and we use this as the objective for single objective optimization. Okay, Opossum 3 can still be found in the Params tab under Util, and you can see that there are two components now our Opossum uh, component and the Performance Explorer component. Let's look at the Opossum component first. The inputs have changed. We now have three inputs, variables, simulators, and objectives. Variables and objectives are the same as before, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect our variables by highlighting them, right-clicking on variables, and say link selected variables, and Objectives also state the same, so again, numbers or integers. I'm going to connect this to our displacement. And the only thing that's really new is the simulator's input and the results output. We'll look at the results output later. But for now, the simulator's input is basically what you want to connect to your simulation engine. In our case, this Caramba cluster. Because later, when we use the Performance Explorer to do um, design space exploration, we're going to update the Grasshopper canvas constantly. And we don't really want the simulation engine to simulate every single variant. Um, because, you know, in case you do daylight simulations, this would just take too long. So what this does is, like, later, when we open the Performance Explorer, this component is going to be disabled. So the component you connect to the simulator. You can also uh, connect multiple components to the simulator input. I'm going to double click the opossum component again to open it. And nothing has really changed besides that the close and the safe and close button uh, swapped. It's important to note that you can only use the Performance Explorer if you ran an RBF opt optimization. The reason for that is that RBF opt is model based. So it already generates a surrogate model in the background. It's basically a re regression model that we can then use to visualize and do design space exploration with. In the settings tab, I'm going to set the iter iterations exceeded to 100 again and hit start. So our optimization is done. We reached 100 iterations and the results table is filled. This time it's really important that you hit save and close because we need to save the results and output them to our Performance Explorer uh, component. So I'm going to hit save and close. And again, under util, I'll take the Performance Explorer component and put it on the canvas next to our opossum component. You can see it only has one input, results in. That's where the results go to. So just quickly connect these two. And to open the Performance Explorer, again, you just double click the component. Okay. 
Once the Performance Explorer opened, you see this heat map on the left hand side, and on the right hand side, a legend, a color range input field, and this parameters diagram, which I'll explain later. The seat map on the left hand side is the fitness landscape of the so far explored design space. And we can now zoom in by either using the mouse wheel or the zoom bar down here. You can see that there are a lot of those black dots on this, um, on this fitness landscape, a hundred to be uh, precise. These are the so far simulated design variants. With a left click on these dots, you can explore the designs. And you can see that on the right hand side, this objective value is updated every time you click somewhere. You can also now click anywhere on this fitness landscape. And you can see now that even though we've never simulated this point, you get an ob objective value. And by pressing the left mouse button and moving around, I can move this, um, this cross over the fitness landscape to explore different designs and their corresponding performance. You can also see already why this tool comes in very handy. You can understand how design and performance correlate and explore the design space in the search for well-performing um, designs. So if you moved through this design space and you found a shell design or design of any kind that you like, and you wanna make sure what the actual performance is, you can hit the simulate button, which will unblock your simulator that you connected. And you'll get the simulated result updated in um, the Performance Explorer. You can also see that it wasn't very far off and that a new point appeared where we hit um, simulate. I'm also gonna, maybe I'm interested in this not so uh, good performing area down here. Also wanna simulate a point here and maybe a point over here just for demonstration again. Um, when I'm zoomed in and I want to get out, I can hit the right mouse button, which resets the zoom. Okay, now let's look at the area over here again. I said this is the legend indicating which color um, corresponds to what performance or objective. And then we can adjust the color range manually down here. Because maybe in your design um, project, you already know that you do not want to exceed a displacement of let's say 30 centimeters. So every design variant which is exceeding this constraint is not valid or interesting to us. So you can do this by clicking in here and just typing in whatever number you want to set as the max, as long as it's larger than the minimum, which is right now around five. In order to update the map now, you can hit refresh and you see that the fitness landscape now looks very different. Um, there are basically large areas that all exceed our 30 maximum. But then there are basically here two splotches, I would say, one down here and one up there, that fall into this constraint. So down here, we have a topology that has very large openings and a very small um, footprint. And up here, we have very a very shallow but very wide shell again you can explore your um, different designs and maybe you you do like this design over here a lot and you want to simulate this again see that it's actually performing better than we estimated so maybe also something that on this map right now falls outside is actually within um, our constraint 27.39 after hitting the simulation simulate button. If I click refresh again, we can see that the heat map also updated in these areas where we simulated the point. So basically it's a lot more sure that those areas here are within 
the performance criteria of 30 centimeters displacement. Okay, I'm gonna reset the zoom again. In order to reset the uh, color range, you can, for maximum, just type in max. Or you type in the maximum number as indicated below the field. I'm just quickly gonna hit a refresh again. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is how this performance map correlates to our grasshopper inputs. So you can see that these axes are being labeled. And if I move over to our variables, so the inputs to our optimization, you can see that these axes have the same names as these number sliders. So if I move, for example, height two, our cross here moves straight up and down as indicated by this axis. So height two is a vertical axis. Height one is a di diagonal axis. So if I move the slider, the cross moves diagonally. You can also see that this parameters diagram down here does the same thing. There are these control points on the axes indicating basically where we are right now on our number slider, so somewhere in the middle. If I move this, you can see that the grasshopper canvas updates, the cross position updates, and our objective value updates. And again, this is really handy to explore which input variables actually affect your performance in what way. So for example, you can see that both areas that perform fairly good, the one up here and the one down here, have a small center height. If we increase the center height, our performance drops no matter where we are. So now we can also already understand that the center height negatively correlates with our objective. With this, I want to close the tutorial on the Performance Explorer. Thanks for watching this video and using Opossum. If you still have any questions left, feel free to contact us via email or ask them on Rhino Discourse. Happy optimizing!